So these individuals are low in serotonin, and because of that, they have a low pain threshold, pain's magnified, tend to be a little bit down, a little bit depressed, maybe anxious, can't sleep because serotonin is needed to make the, the, the sleep hormone melatonin. And then you have more serotonin receptors in your intestinal tract than you do in your brain. So, you know, that's why when you get, when you get nervous, you get butterflies in your stomach. But uh, when you get low in serotonin in your gut, now you start to have issues with the irritable bowel. So early on, I realized if I could get their serotonin level up and get them going into deep restorative sleep, I was going to have some opportunity to have some success. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It's a little red button. You punch that and it's going to notify you every time we put out a new episode that can help you improve your bone health. And then also, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for the free seven day osteoporosis kickstart. That's going to walk you through everything you need to be doing right now to get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. After you do those two things, go ahead and press play on this episode and I'll see you inside. Welcome, welcome to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. Joining us today to explore how your mystery pain and fatigue could be connected to fibromyalgia is Dr. Roger Murphy. Dr. Roger Murphy is a chiropractic physician and board certified nutritional specialist. He is an internationally recognized fibromyalgia expert. His Murphy method, a combination of functional and orthomolecular medicine, has helped thousands of patients get healthy and feel good again. He's the author of three books for patients and doctors, including Treating and Beating Fibromyalgia and Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, Treating and Beating Anxiety and Depression with Orthomolecular Medicine, and Heart Disease, What Your Doctor Won't Tell You. Dr. Murphy is a frequent guest on local and national radio and television programs, including NBC, Fox, and ABC. He writes for several professional and public health-related publications. His articles have appeared in the Washington Post, as well as peer-reviewed professional journals, including Townsend Letter for Doctors and Patients, Chiropractic Economics, Alternative Fibromyalgia News Magazine, The American Chiropractor, and Nutra News. He maintains a busy tele telemedicine practice, is uh, helping patients all over the world get healthy and feel good again at uh, www.yourfibrodoctor.com. Dr. Roger Murphy, it's great to have you here today. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. You know, it's, it's so hard to be to get interviewed. And you hear all this, you know, your bio, you're thinking, oh, my goodness, it just goes on and on. Uh, but I'm so happy to be here. And it's kind of I always kind of feel bad saying this. This is my favorite topic. I hate that we even have to talk about fibromyalgia. But, uh, you know, it's it's the, it's a mission I've been on for two decades, which is to help those with fibromyalgia learn how to overcome this illness. It's an illness that unfortunately a lot of people don't really know much about. Maybe we'll change that today. Um, and a lot of people who have fibromyalgia really pretty much have given up on ever feeling good again, unfortunately. Well, let's let's change that for them because a lot of people don't know what fibromyalgia is. Um, they may have, you know, this mystery fatigue, this uh, chronic pain that they just can't put their finger on. They can't figure these things out. And uh, they may have gone to their medical doctors and just kind of been brushed off as in there's nothing you can do about this. So can you maybe walk through what is fibromyalgia? Yeah, so fibromyalgia is a syndrome. Now, syndrome is a group of symptoms that people have in common, and we give it a name. Most people have heard of irritable bowel syndrome, may not know what it is. Uh, it's one of these names, that's all it is. But irritable bowel syndrome is the symptoms of, of that are bloating and gas, stomach pain, constipation, loose bowel movements are going back and forth. With fibromyalgia, it's diffuse, achy pain, sometimes disabling pain, fatigue, brain fog. Uh, ir irritable bowel is often part of fibromyalgia. They don't have a lot of uh, uh, stamina or resistance to stress. So they're kind of vulnerable to any kind of physical or emotional, even chemical stress. But it's an, it's an illness that affects primarily women. 95% of those with fibromyalgia are women. That affects uh, the people around the world. So it's not here in the United States. It's estimated that about 8% of the world population has fibromyalgia. And, and the ages can be, I now take care of, Unfortunately, some kids who are 10 years old, and I take care of some, some uh, younger adults who are in, in their early 80s. So it can be any age group, but primarily it's similar to bone health. We see that a lot of people start having issues in their 40s and on into their 60s where they start to develop a lot of this achy all over, diffuse pain that often takes multiple doctor visits in years before they ever get the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. And what, what's causing this? 
What's causing people to develop this? You know, it's a, that's a great, great question, which we knew definitively. And that's one of the big problems is that the, with fibromyalgia, there's no test that says, oh, yeah, you have it. You know, we can't run a blood test and know for sure that you have fibromyalgia. We can't take an x-ray and see this. So it's a process of elimination. But what we do know, Kevin, is that this is an illness that is is um, associated with a thing called uh, central sensitization pain syndrome, where pain becomes more magnified. The nervous system is not communicating with the hormonal system, the endocrine system in the body. And they develop a thing called allodynia, which is low pain threshold. Now, you and I have had the pleasure of meeting before, and uh, you were so kind enough to be on my summit. I really love your work. And we had a conversation. We're talking about what is the connection between fibromyalgia and, and bone health? Because you were sharing me the, the demographics of your audience. And I was saying, oh, those that's that's my same demographics. These are the people that I work with. And one of the things that I see uh, quite, quite often is that bone, uh, um, loss of bone, osteopenia, osteoporosis, once individuals start to develop this condition that's triggering this inflammation and pain. For, for those with fibromyalgia, that pain that's coming from this osteoporosis can be tremendous. It's, it's, it's over, it's, you know, it's an overabundance of pain that someone with maybe regular osteoporosis would not even experience. So for these people, osteoporosis is a big, big deal, big deal. And then I also know, I mean, as we're talking about bone health too, and, and yes, you and I have very similar, we, we talked about the overlap that we see, you know, I, I work a lot with people that are, um, I mean, anywhere from their late twenties to their mid nineties, but the majority are in that 50 to 65 plus range. And, um, I know that there are studies out there that show that individuals with fibromyalgia may be at increased risk of developing osteoporosis. And I know part of that could be because of the decreased physical activity that yeah. comes with a sedentary lifestyle, right? Maybe can we talk about that? And maybe even the use of certain medications too. So could we talk about um, why would that, why would fibromyalgia lead someone into a sedentary lifestyle? Well, so with fibromyalgia, their get up and go has got up and went. I mean, they have no extra energy. And sometimes people will hear the symptoms of fibromyalgia. They go, oh, well, that's me. I'm achy all over and I'm tired and I can't sleep. That's another thing I didn't mentioned, and I've got these senior moments, but for the fibromyalgia patient, it's magnified. It's like having the flu from hell that never goes away, that achy pain, you cannot shake it, you can't you can't get enough, you can't sleep it off, can't get enough rest. Uh, unfortunately, in the, um, in the fibromyalgia community, uh, in the conventional medical community, the drug therapy alone approach is a Danian, and, and that's that's a shame, but that's the way it is. The medicine, uh, drug, drugs alone don't help fibromyalgia, at least not long-term. If you look at studies, we see that patients are typically prescribed the common drugs of Lyrica or Gorillus or Gabapentin or Rotten. Uh, maybe they're an antidepressant like Civella or Cymbalta, some of these things. But we see that over a 15-year period, they don't get any better. In fact, they, they get worse. And the common denominator, though, what, what is it that's creating this, this poor bone health is absolutely it's it's lack of, of exercise just not being uh, ambulatory many of those with fibromyalgia they can't get out of bed sad but true because they are just so run down and their body is so broken down the other part of that is they have 70 percent of those with fibromyalgia have irritable bowel syndrome which i mentioned earlier which is also associated with central sensitization pain syndrome where pain is magnified uh, but for those individuals are magnified in the gut, but because they're not absorbing, breaking down and absorbing their food, they're not getting those nutrients. They're not getting those vitamins and minerals that they need to build bone. So we start to see that one of the symptoms of malnutrition for these folks is brittle bones. And we see that, you know, we see that time and time again. Um, but yeah, the, the, the lack of exercise, I think though, Kevin is the biggie. That's the biggie is they just, can't have that weight bearing exercise, which is so important for bone health. And you re you just touched on some standard recommendations and treatments also that are typically recommended for fibromyalgia. So um, the medication specifically, but can you maybe touch on the medications and then how somebody even gets to the point where they get this diagnosis that then requires this uh, medication, or I should say requires, you know, 
and, and air quotations. Maybe then after that, we could talk about some of the other things outside of the medication that can be done too. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in conventional medicine, and this is not to belittle anybody, this is just, this is just the way it is. This is the paradigm. You have a group of symptoms, so you get a diagnosis. And based on that diagnosis is dictated a kind of a cookbook recipe of this, you know, we're going to try you on this drug, then this drug, then that drug. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, maybe it's a surgery, maybe you're a surgical candidate, depending on what the illness is. But with fibromyalgia, there's so many symptoms. I mean, they can't sleep, so they have insomnia. They have brain fog, pain all over, no energy. Oftentimes, because they're so run down and have dealt with an illness that most people don't understand, and doctors, for the most part, can't help them, they become depressed. You know, who wouldn't get a little down about this, right? So they're depressed. Then they start developing some of the GI problems. And, you know, it's just one symptom after the next. And there's no way that you can treat all those symptoms with, you know, if you do, then you, you get on kind of the medical merry-go-round where, you know, you're passed from one doctor to the next. Each doctor gives you another drug for that symptom. But you can't drug your way out of fibromyalgia. You just, you, you, there's just too many symptoms. So ideally, what we want to do is look at what are the underlying causes of the symptoms of fibromyalgia. And no one, you know, fibromyalgia is just a name. That's all it is. It doesn't cause the pain. It doesn't cause the poor sleep. It doesn't cause the low energy. It's just a name given to describe these common symptoms. So then what we want to do is we want to think about what is this creating the pain? What is it causing this individual not to have the energy to be able to get up and get a shower that day. You know, they're just so exhausted. And that's really the key. That's what functional medicine is all about, is finding and fixing the underlying causes of these symptoms. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I wanna take one more minute to talk about if you are somebody who was newly diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis, and you're at a point where you're stressed, you're worried, you're overwhelmed, you have no idea where to start or how to get started getting confident in your plan, or maybe something has been proposed as an option that you're not ready to go down yet, right? You wanna to try to do everything you possibly can naturally before considering that as an option. Or if you're the person who has been on this journey for a while, You've tried to figure all these things out on your own when it comes to osteoporosis, but you're still losing bone. If either of those situations is where you're at right now, I wanna tell you about the Stronger Bone Solution Program. Over 5,000 people have come through the Stronger Bone Solution Program, and it walks you through the exact process you need to fill in the missing pieces, uncover critical things in your plan that you may not be aware of, and help you make modifications, adjustments, and tweaks to get you to the place where you're building stronger bones. That's what this program can do for you. And it's run for years and helped many, many people. And I want you to be able to benefit from this program as well. So if you're not confident and you're waking up every single day worried about fracture, wondering how, are you, how am I going to improve my bone health today? I don't want you to be in that position. I want you to get confident in your plan so that you can focus on living life enjoying the life that you deserve with the people you love most. So if that's where you want to be, head over to bonecoach.com forward slash apply and apply for our Stronger Bone Solution program right now. I'm Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I want to see you inside this program. I want to help you get on the path to improvement in Stronger Bones. So go over, submit your application. If we approve your application and it's free to apply, then we'll let you know the next steps to get started in one of those programs. So hope to see you inside very soon. Let's get back to the episode. And do you ever see um, things like mold or lime or heavy metals or parasites or those kind of things? Do you ever see some of that show up in your patients with fibromyalgia? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a decade ago, um, it, the patients that I had a decade ago are different than they are now. And I was talking to Neil Nathan. I don't know if you know Neil or not. He's a pretty well-known uh, physician who wrote the book Toxic, which I highly recommend. But we were having a conversation about this. And I was, say, I was saying, Neil, what, you know, your fibromyalgia patients, he's still in practice. I don't, don't think he sees a lot of patients anymore. But um, I said, what are, you, what are you seeing in your fibromyalgia patients? Why, why do you think they're so different now? And he said, Rogers, because they're so toxic. 10 years ago, if I could get them sleeping, and that's the number one thing you got to get right with these folks, uh, if I could get them sleeping and get them on some over-the-counter supplements, maybe fix their thyroid, then they were good to go. 
Now, though, they're so much more complicated. And Kevin, that was a great question. The reason why they're so much com- uh, more complicated is now we're seeing that the underlying triggers for these symptoms involve things that we weren't seeing previously, like heavy metals and mold toxins and Lyme disease, things that 10 years ago, even though I would test for it, I never would see it wasn't an issue. I forgot all about it. And then I started seeing more and more patients who, for whatever reason, um, I wasn't getting the results that I used to get. And it got me thinking, uh, you know, I'm missing something. Started going back and doing some of the testing that I decided, you know, uh, erroneously thought I didn't need to do anymore. Sure enough, everyone's got mold now. People, So many people got Lyme disease now. They've got all these uh, conditions that no one is really finding. So there's no opportunity to fix it because they don't even know it's there. What are some of your favorite tests? Like if someone were to, if somebody's listening to this and they're kind of circling around this, like what are some of your favorite tests to maybe help understand? Obviously there are a lot of tests that people can do. Like we, I think we all know yeah, that. Yeah, there, there is. And so you'd ask, and I kind of went off to the side there, but you asked, you know, kind of how do they even get the diagnosis? As I mentioned earlier, it's typically these individuals get under too much stress. And sometimes people hear that think, I'm not under any stress. We're under a tremendous amount of stress day in and day out, and we don't even know it. Our bodies just deal with it. And that stress can be a chemical stress, things that you're breathing, you know, toxins you're breathing in every time you take a breath, things you put on your skin when you're eating foods, that there's there's um, microbes and pathogens and things that your body has to deal with. Maybe you're taking medications that are toxic. Maybe you have a toxic mind. You're just thinking you know, really uh, negative thoughts, or you're in a very stressful relationship. But for these individuals, something comes along that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. And they start to develop the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Initially, it's diffuse kind of achy pain. They go to their doctor, he or she puts them on NSAIDs, non anti-inflammatories, says, you know, come back if you have any problems. That develops typically, um, they start to have struggle with their sleep. Once they start struggling with their sleep, then it's a slippery slope because if you're not getting deep restorative or sleep on a consistent basis, your body can't repair itself. So we see that the inflammation is driven up by 40%. Uh, obviously, if you're not sleeping well, you're, you know, you're not going to think clearly, you're going to have brain fog, you're going to be tired, uh, you're at risk for type 2 diabetes, you're at risk for osteoporosis, as you probably know. Uh, we just see the body starts to break down when it doesn't get the rest that it needs. Um, but these individuals, they go to doctor after doctor after doctor and, and test and test or run and everything comes back most of the time, you know, within, within normal, um, knowing whether your cholesterol is elevated or not for fiber and fiber match is really pretty, pretty much worthless, uh, blood sugar. Yeah. But, uh, but they finally, someone says, you know what, I don't know what you have. I think you, you, we've ruled out all of these autoimmune, dis- you know, you don't have MS, don't have, um, rheumatoid arthritis. You don't have these, these other illnesses you must have fibromyalgia. Let's put you on. And here's the, you know, the, the recipe for what we're going to put you on. Come back in six months and let me know how you're doing. We don't really know what else to do for you. You're just going to have to learn to live with it. So it, it's an illness that in the conventional world, as far as testing is not really that revealing. Now, having said that, you, you know, what are some of the tests that I like? Uh, I find that about 60% of my patients with fibromyalgia have a problem with their thyroid that's never been properly diagnosed or is not being properly treated. Typically they're getting really basic testing like a TSH and maybe a T4. And that's not thorough enough. It doesn't really tell you enough about what's going on with the thyroid. The, the thyroid gland is your master gland. I mean, it controls your energy of every cell. And when it's not functioning correctly, you start to see everything slows down, including the body's ability to repair itself, including with bone health. We see that with low thyroid function. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's so important. Thyroid function is so important. Um, what are some of the non-pharmacological treatments that somebody with fibromyalgia may find helpful? Well, so in the Murphy method, it's, that's real original, right? <laughs> so I had a patient years ago saying, golly, uh, whatever you do, Dr. Murphy really works. It's great. What do you call it? And I thought about it. Well, um, it's the Murphy method. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's it's been um, you know, it's been a 20-year quest to kind of figure this thing out. In the beginning, when I have these patients that would come to me, 
I would just think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this person? They've got 30 different symptoms. They know they can't sleep. They can't get out of bed and they have all this pain. They're on all these medications and nothing's helping. But what I realized, Kevin, uh, fairly early on was if I could get them going into deep restorative sleep on a consistent basis, then that alone would dramatically improve most of their symptoms, including the ones with irritable bowel. Uh, these individuals are low in a chemical called serotonin, a brain chemical, the happy hormone. And because they're low in serotonin, pain becomes more magnified. Serotonin helps to block a hormone called substance P. And, and when substance P is elevated, you have more pain. Uh, so these individuals are low in serotonin. And because of that, they have a low pain threshold. Pain's magnified, tend to be a little bit down, a little bit depressed, maybe anxious. Can't sleep because serotonin is needed to make the, the, the sleep hormone melatonin. And then you have more serotonin receptors in your intestinal tract than you do in your brain. So, you know, that's why when you get, when you get nervous, you get butterflies in your stomach. But uh, when you get low in serotonin in your gut, now you start to have issues with irritable bowel. So early on, I realized if I could get their serotonin level up and get them going into deep restorative sleep, I was going to have some opportunity to have some success. Um, so serotonin, a lot of folks probably are watching or listening to this podcast, are probably taking antidepressants. I think one in 10 females now in the United States takes an antidepressant. And there's certainly a time and a place for that. But antidepressants don't make the brain chemical serotonin. Uh, it, it's, it's like a gasoline additive. It helps you get more mileage out of the gasoline that's in your tank, but it doesn't make the gasoline. Uh, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor is supposed to reuptake this this hormone serotonin, and you get more mileage out of it. You get more you, you get more out of it. But if you're run down, uh, you hadn't slept in years, you don't have any serotonin to reuptake. So it doesn't really do anything. And we see that in the studies. We see that 70% uh, of the time, a placebo is just as good as an antidepressant. Now, now I'm not telling anybody to stop their antidepressants. I would never say that. I'm just saying that uh, there are other options. And one of those is to look at where does serotonin come from? So the brain chemical serotonin comes from the foods that we eat, the proteins. And in a protein, whether that's a hamburger patty or a piece of cheese, these amino acids, these building blocks, one of those is tryptophan. Uh, most everybody's, you know, associates tryptophan with eating too much turkey and getting sleepy. Uh, but tryptophan then needs to turn into a thing called 5-hydroxytryptophan. And when that's combined with synergistic vitamins and minerals, that turns into serotonin. So rather than relying on a gasoline additive, you can literally go to your health food store or online and you could purchase 5-hydroxytryptophan. And with the right synergistic vitamins, you could take that 5-HTP and you can fill your brain up with serotonin without all the potential side effects of antidepressants, which ironically can cause diffuse achy pain, anxiety and depression, poor sleep and weight gain. And you brought up SSRIs there too. I mean, so SSRIs, you mentioned they're class of drugs typically uses antidepressants. There was a study, 19 studies on the effect of SSRIs on bone indicate yeah, they have yes. a negative effect on bone mineral density yes. too, and yes. increase the risk of fractures. So uh, important to keep in mind there also. And, and thank you so much for sharing that. And then any other tips or, or guidance or things like that, that you think are important for our audience to understand about uh, fibromyalgia? Well, first of all, it's treatable. Uh, you know, most people kind of come away with the idea that they just have to live with it. And they come to that false conclusion because their practitioner, he or she, they've come to that false conclusion over the last decade. We, you know, we we don't have a pill that makes it go away. And that's what, farm, you know, pharma, pharmacy, um, the pharmaceutical industry is looking for is the magic pill. And a lot of physicians rely on the magic pill or group of pills to suppress the symptoms, but it just doesn't work in fibromyalgia. So the practitioner will tell them, just learn to live with it. And they and most people with fibro come away with that thinking that's their only option. But uh, like a lot of chronic illnesses out there that are not served very well by conventional medicine, sometimes, not again, not to step on anybody's toes, but, the, um, but chronic illness oftentimes is a matter of just treating the symptoms and covering up the symptoms. 
you, you, if you do that, that can give you some relief depending on the, the condition. But in fibromyalgia, it's short lived. Um, so, so the thing I want to share is there's definitely hope. Fibromyalgia definitely can be reversed, but it can't be, you can't drug your way out of it. You just can't do it. And um, I think that we're heading into a new phase with fibromyalgia in that people are starting to realize that conventional medicine has given up on them and they've kind of, they're finally getting that message and they're starting to really kind of look at other practitioners who offer something a little bit different, you know? So I think, I think hopefully uh, this next decade, we're going to see that we're getting enough success stories out there that those with fibromyalgia realize that this, it's not something that they have to live with. They just need to learn how to overcome it. And you're obviously, you know, an expert in this field on fibromyalgia, and you've done so much great work for so many people uh, in this field. So Dr. Roger Murphy, I mean, is, a, is an amazing resource for fibromyalgia. And I actually, I actually spoke on Dr. Murphy's summit that's coming up here. Also, why don't we tell them about, for those of you listening um, before, when is the launch date of the summit? So the summit will will start promoting it in early May, May 9th, I believe is when it's, well, you can actually register. 2023. Registration process. Yeah. Yeah. And then it begins, it goes live and that's a free for a whole week. You will have over 40, I think we're 40 now, maybe 50 interviews now. I don't know. Keeps growing. It keeps growing because I keep finding somebody else. I think, oh my gosh, that'd be, they need to hear this. They need to hear this. So I think we're at 50 now, uh, but it'll be a, a week of free interviews. So you can watch as many as you want to during that week. And uh, if you, you know, if you feel like you want to uh, invest in the summit and purchase it and have it the rest of your life to watch anytime you want to, then that's an option, not, but not something you have to do. Awesome. Um, and we'll, but we'll your interview sure. was a great, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed your interview. You did such a wonderful job and it was such a great, great opportunity to get to meet you and, and uh, to, to learn a bit more about your practice, you know, what you do. I think it's fabulous what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that. And and by the way, for everybody listening, if you're listening to this before May 23rd, uh, 2023, that's when the summit launches, this uh, Freedom from Fibromyalgia Summit. Uh, you'll be able to access the live summit uh, down in the show notes, and we'll have the link there that you'll be able to access that from. If you're listening after, you could probably still access that link and get access to some of the materials or the replay or something like that. So uh, I do have uh, just a few other questions for you, Dr. Dr. Murphy. And um, are there any new developments maybe that we haven't talked about yet in, in the fibromyalgia research world that may be of particular interest? Unfortunately, not a whole lot. I think we're going to see some breakthroughs because of COVID. If there's a silver lining, if you can find a silver lining of this mess, uh, what we're seeing is long hauler syndrome is a real entity. And we see that that is generating a lot of research dollars from 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 the government. And we're going to see that that research is going to bleed over into the fibromyalgia and the chronic fatigue syndrome community because there's so many similarities. You know, we're learning that uh, just, just something in the last few years has come up as starting to get into medical text or, or really conversations, I say more than text, this thing called cell danger theory, which if any of these people uh, are on some of these summits, you can hear that's kind of a, a new thing that people are talking about even though it's been around for a while. And what we're learning is there are different triggers that when the body encounters these different triggers, it goes into a defensive posture and, and that sabotages its ability to generate energy from the mitochondria, the power plants of the cells. And when that happens, it sets up this um, chronic inflammation, which generates the pain and, 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 uh, and no energy. So you know, no, no mental or physical energy. So a lot of research is going to be driven that way, um, partly due because of COVID. I think we're, you know, we're having that conversation now. The virus is what triggers this, but it could be a mold toxin. It could be it could be heavy metals. It could be something that you came in contact with. It could be an old Epstein Barr virus now that's rearing its ugly head. The the, the money's finally, I think, going to be there to start digging a little deeper in some of these these uh, uh, avenues. 
Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. If you're finding it helpful, please leave a positive rating and review. Hit that like button, subscribe to the podcast or the channel. That lets us help more people and reach and serve more people. And it also lets us know that this is helpful to you on your journey to better health and stronger bones. And then also, right down in the show notes, you can actually find a link to my free Bone Healthy Recipes Guide. That's gonna give you access to some amazing and delicious recipes to support your journey to stronger bones. And then also, we have a link to my free Stronger Bones Masterclass in the show notes too. And that is the three-step process that has helped people in over 1,500 cities around the world get confident in their plan for Stronger Bones. Over 110,000 people have, have taken part in this and it's been really, really helpful for them and I want you to have free access to it too. So add your name and email right down there in the show notes, get access to that free Stronger Bones Masterclass and let's get you confident in your Stronger Bones plan today. Well, that's good to hear. Um, that's good to hear that that's coming. And then maybe uh, a last, a final closing note from you or, or just a last question that I have is maybe, can you offer any advice or words of encouragement to somebody who's maybe struggling with fibromyalgia? Well, if you don't mind, I hope it's okay. They could go to my website, your, as you mentioned earlier, your fibrodoctor.com. Mm. Um, there's all sorts of free resources and just at your leisure, look at some of the videos, some of the blogs, uh, podcasts, and see if it resonates with you. But what you'll quickly learn is that there is a path to overcoming fibromyalgia and there's some some linchpins if you can kind of get these uh set up you know if you can open certain doors it really opens up everything and the first place is to start is making sure you're getting this deep restorative sleep ideally without sleep medications which can create all sorts of problems ironically they can cause diffuse achy pain uh, anxiety depression brain fog a weight gain, all sorts of things can start to show up with these medications. Um, so, so, but anyway, th yes, to answer your question, there's quite a bit of, of, of resources on the website, check it out and see if it resonates with you. And it does then start your learning journey, you know, be proactive and, and learn everything you can. And, uh, but again, this illness is very much treatable. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, these resources, all of that with our audience. Uh, I, I really appreciate all the all the great work that you do. So, and everybody listening, you can find all the resources, uh, Dr. Roger Murphy, any any other resources that you think are important. So we've got your fibrodoctor.com, right? Um, we have your summit, the Freedom from Fibromyalgia Summit. That's May 23rd through uh, May 30th, 2023. Which other, do we have any other resources you want to share with our audience that we can link in the show notes? Uh, I think that's it. And I do a podcast. Uh, I love your podcast. And I do one is called Super Healthy Human. And on the Super Healthy Human, it's much broader in scope. So when we, we certainly talk about fibromyalgia, which is something I've specialized in for over two decades. But we also talk about some of my other work with anxiety and depression. I, as you mentioned, I wrote a book on that and uh, heart disease and a big, you know, uh, type two diabetes is just blowing up you know here in the in the in the u.s uh but the super healthy human.com is you can check out that podcast as well fantastic well thank you so much for sharing those resources and for everybody listening you can find all the resources show notes everything mentioned here today over at bonecoach.com forward slash dr roger murphy fibromyalgia and for everybody tuning in we'll see you in the next episode Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Hope you found that episode helpful and that you enjoyed it. Just one last reminder, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for your free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. It's gonna tell you everything you need to do to start getting on the path to improvement. Hope you found this helpful. I'm your Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I'll see you soon.